Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another Art Impressions watercolor project for you. Today I'm going to be creating this fall scene using some of the brand new stamps from Art Impressions. This is a perfect scene to welcome in the new fall season. Let me show you the products we're going to be using to do this project. So first from the Living Water set, I'm using the Bucket and the Wishing Well. Then the Pumpkins from the Harvest set. This little bunch of flowers from Flower Set 2. The small grasses from the original foliage set. This small pot from the container set. And the mini flowers from the mini flower set. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get started. These are the mini the small grasses, and I'm gonna ink them up with some seat with some olive green. Now the reason I'm doing these first is because I want the bucket to be to look like it's in the middle of the grass. So I think on the last Watercolor Wednesday, Bonnie had done the same thing with um, her project with, I want to say it was the, the tractor. So she wanted the tractor to look like it was in the grass. So she put the grass down first and then masked it off and then stamped it in. And I just really liked that technique. So I thought I would give it a go. So now I'm just using my brush and pulling the water, pulling the color out of the lines. So I just, I have the simple little mask. I just, it's, it's not elaborate. It's just a little piece of post-it tape. And now I'm going to ink up the bucket with the sepia and some African violet. And I'm going to take off the, the top of that because I want the flowers to look like they're, it's inside the bucket. So then I'm going to ink that up again. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm using my tidy towel from Gina K Designs just to make sure there's nothing left on that, on the top of that bucket. So I really wanted it to be really nice and clean. So then I'm just going to decide how I want it positioned and you could use a stamp positioner, it would just, just as easy to use that, um, but I just kind of wung it. And then I'm going to take the mask off. And you can see it kind of sits behind that, that group of um, grasses. So I'm just taking my brush. And I'm going to pull some of that color out of the lines here. This is the, the sepia and the African violet give a really, really nice kind of a grayish brown color. So I'm trying to stay within those sections. I'm not going to go out of those sections because I want that to be to maintain. You want to keep the integrity of that stamp. And then I'm just running my brush very quickly around the top and bottom of that little belly band and adding a little bit of color in the in, inside of it. Now I'm going to take and put a little bit more grass to fill in just those areas that I kind of missed there on the side and then just pulling that color right out. So now I, I did a little mask and I'm going to mask off my bucket because now I'm going to put the flowers. So these are the bigger flowers from the uh, foliage set two, or the flower set two. And I'm going to ink up the bottoms with the green, the, the olive green. And then I'm going to use some English red and, and I'm going to ink up the buds. So now I'm going to stamp that right inside the bucket. And I'm going to stamp it a couple of times because I still want to get that highlight, the high, or the highlight and the, um, the darks and the lights to give it some depth. Now I'm just softening a little bit of the greens. I'm not touching them a lot just to get them to be inside that bucket a, a little bit more. And then I'll rinse my brush off and pinch it and then soften the blooms. And you want to maintain, now you want to make sure you have some white space left in there. You don't want it to be completely colored in. 
So I'm just quickly touching some of those blooms, touching some, bringing them outside of that bucket a little bit more, just to give a nice variation in color. So now I did another really quick mask, just to mask off the flowers as well as the bucket and the grass because I'm gonna stamp that wishing well right over the top of that and I want it to protect it. But before I do that, I'm going to put my pumpkins in. So I'm gonna ink up this pumpkin in sepia and I'm going to take off just the bottom of that. That's another way where you can make it look like it's behind the grass. You leave off some of your, of the grasses or you leave off some of the stamp portion of the stamp and that way you can stamp something right in front of it and it's not going to look you're not going to see all those lines it's just another way to do the same technique so I created a mask I put that mask over that pumpkin and now I'm going to ink it up again and this time I'm just going to do a different orientation I wanted it kind of to be the la to the left and maybe it fell over a little bit And then I'm going to take and I'm going to do another pumpkin. This is a this this is a different pumpkin in the same set. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to ink up the top. And then I'm going to stamp it on the left-hand side of that pumpkin. Right there. So I decided I had a little bit of overlap between the two pumpkins, but it didn't really matter. I was just going to get rid of it and then I'm going to color these pumpkins in really quickly. So I'm just pulling some of that color, some of that brown into each pumpkin to create some shadows so I know where I want my colors to go. Maintaining a highlight, you want to highlight on the top of that, on the top of that pumpkin. So usually we leave the highlight in just white space. When I when I do my pumpkins, I like that highlight to be yellow, just because it gives. I think it gives a really more realistic look to my pumpkins. So I will do them. I'll put down yellow, then I'll put down a light coat of orange, and then I'll put another coat of orange over it, maintaining the that yellow in the in the middle. So I'm just using my my fine tip and just making sure that those stems are nice and dark so that they don't get lost in the middle of my painting. Now I'm going to cover them up with my mask again. I made a couple more masks. Oh, I'm just going to cover this one up, I guess. I'm going to put some of these grasses in the background so that that little pumpkin right there doesn't look like it's just floating into space and I'm going to take the mask off because I really do want that mask those greens to be right underneath that pumpkin and I'm just going to walk it left right up and down just to give it some fullness So as you're walking it, if you jump it up and down, you'll get some of that height and it'll give you some different contrasts when you do your grasses. And then I'm just going to pull that color out of lines. This will make sure that I don't go too far with my, when I go to color my pumpkins. Sometimes I tend to get carried away and this at least gives me a little stopping point where I have to be careful. And I'm just pulling some color in and out and up and down. Pulling a little bit of that color from underneath to give it a little more grounding. And sometimes I'll take some extra 
color from my palette. If I don't think there's some areas that need to be a little bit darker, I'll add that, just, just freehand that in. And then I'm going to take some of that green and color in some of those stems. <coughs> Chew! Bless, bless me! Excuse me! So now I'm coming in with some brilliant yellow. And as you can see, I'm just putting it right on the top of those pumpkins. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm just putting a very light coat right now. You want to build the color up. You don't want to just put a ton of it down right away. And I'm trying to just put where, where that highlight would be. I'm going to come in with some orange now and I'm going to go where the darkest would be which is right along that other pumpkin as well as in those um, where those lines are the crevices of the pumpkin and I'm going to be careful to watch out for my grasses at the bottom And then, so this again, I'm just going to build this color up slowly, letting it dry in between while I move on to the next area. And then I can come in back in with some darker color and just darken up those hi highlights and where I want those um, highlights to show the darkest. This is so much fun. I love fall. I love when the weather gets cooler and I love the color the trees when they start to turn colors, which right now we're about peak season up north. Another couple weeks it'll be peak season down here and down in the south in southern New Hampshire. So I'm very excited. I love to do fall projects. Almost, well, I love to do all the seasons. All the seasons are my favorite. I was excited that Bonnie came out with the pumpkins because they had retired the other, the other set that had some pumpkins in it, and I was really worried that I wasn't going to have any pumpkins to be able to do this year. These, all the fall, all the new sets that she came out with are so awesome. They're so versatile for all different occasions, all different seasons, and I just I just love all of them. See now I'm putting another layer of orange, just going right around the edges where I want those darker areas to be. And then I was kind of losing some of my, my darkness, so I'm just coming in with my my fine tip and just darkening in those edges of that pumpkin. And it's, I'm using a very light hand. I'm not, I'm not very heavy handed at all on this. So now I've done some masks, so I'm going to put the masks back on these pumpkins to protect them. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp that wishing well right over the top of them. And the reason I did that was because I want these pumpkins to look like they're in the foreground. So whenever you're doing a, a painting, you always want to do the things in the foreground that you want to be in the front. And then mask them off. Sometimes I will do a sky or a scene in the background if I want it to show through but generally that's not um, that's not something I do I do the background very much later very much it's that very much later whatever so I'm inking this up again with some sepia and I'm going to leave off the back of that well because I'm gonna put those mums right in there so I don't want that wishing well to look like it's complete and then come through my flowers. So I'm just going to leave that portion off. 
and I'm just going to ink up all of these bricks and those little stones in the front there. Then I'm going to come back in with some with some African violet and I'm going to go right over the top of that sepia because I really like that color especially for a wishing well. Okay, apparently I put the African violet down first and now I'm coming back with the sepia. It doesn't matter which one you do first. It really doesn't. So I'm just going over all of the stuff with that marker. Again, making sure I keep that back area clean. I don't ink it up. And then just adding that sepia. So now you could add this to your stamp positioner if you wanted to. I just decided to wing it. I'm just going to go in and I think I'm going to go in and see just where I want it to be based on where those pumpkins are and I'm just going to wing it. And then make sure you're putting some nice even pressure on that. And I was pretty happy with where it, where it ended up. So I'm just going to take off those masks now. You see the pumpkins look like they're on a little bit of a hill. And I'm just going to take my paintbrush and start pulling some of that color out of, out of the lines. On these little cobblestones in the front, some of them are hidden underneath the grass, some of them are a little more prominent in the front there. And you can see that colors, the sepia and the, Af uh, the African violet really give a nice color. So if you read my blog, I, this, is a, this is a painting that I did for, my, for the design team for Art Impressions. So I had done, wasn't really sure how I wanted it to be done, so I did my first card, which is the card you see on social media. And I really liked it, so I thought, oh, I'm probably going to get some requests for filming, and so I'm just going to go ahead and film this. But of course, I had already created that picture. So every time you every time you do a scene, even if you use the exact same stamps, it's always going to come out differently. So I wanted to make sure that I got as close as possible, but I left off a couple things. Like I left off the little pot on the left-hand side. My pot in the original one was a little skewed. Um, the little bucket was a little skewed. Was this one is more standing upright. So they're just a little bit of variations, um, but it's generally the same picture. It's just a little different. So now I'm just pulling those colors out of the lines. I'm trying to make sure that I leave a highlight in the middle and I'm just pulling the color where the darkest would be. And then as I get some color on my brush, instead of white, instead of cleaning it off and wiping it off, I'm just kind of using it to add some additional color below. Because that, that African violet tends to get a, to be very juicy and very, um, a lot of color comes out when you use it. So sometimes I either wipe off my brush or clean it off or just transfer some of that color somewhere else. Now you see I'm maintaining each brick. I'm I'm not going up and down. I'm staying within each area. That's where you're going to get the best results by working on each section as its own part, I guess. And I'm going to come back in and add some more color to that wishing well, a little more brown and um, just kind of give that, give that wishing well just a little bit more color. So now I'm just going to pull this color right out of the lines, keeping some areas really, really dark, putting my shadows in. I'm 
remembering where the sun would be hitting, like underneath those eaves would be really, really dark, in between the boards. Sometimes I need to rinse my brush, get a little bit more water. You'll be able to tell as you're doing it if your brush is too wet or too dry. And then just keep pulling the color out. Just adding some more sepia from my palette just to give that a really nice dark finish. So I have a little bit of sepia on my brush, so I'm going to go down and just add a little bit more highlights or dark areas to, to that little well, and then come up to this little where the rope is. Now you want to go on the top and the bottom and pull some color from the bottom because that's going to be round, so you want that, that highlight to be maintained at the top of that little round thing. And then I'm just pulling a little bit of color out of those ropes. And I'll come back in with my marker and darken those up. And then just add a little bit more color to that actual rope there. It's coming together nicely. So here I'm just adding a little bit of clear wa clean wa water, trying to get that highlight to be a little more prominent. Got a little bit away from me there. And then I'm just going to pull the color out of these little eaves underneath this roof, because that's where it would be the darkest. Making sure you maintain that highlight. Now on this roof here, you want to make sure you don't go all the way to the top. So I'm going to pull the color out of the middle of the lines and then I'm going to work my way up. But I'm leaving that highlight right along the top of it. And I really wanted it to look like an old, just an old washing well that had been there for a while. and hadn't been really maintained all that well. I'm not really paying too much attention. I'm trying not I'm not I'm not trying to be perfect here. I actually like it when these projects when they're you're not perfect and they're a little bit on the messier side. And then I'll just add a little bit more color to some of these bricks here just to give them a little more character, a little bit more weather beaten. This is such a relaxing thing to do. These, these little paintings are so, they're my therapy. I just love to sit down and paint them and it's nice to put on cards. I can't wait to start my Christmas cards. Definitely I'm going to be using some of those new those new stamps that Bonnie came out with, with the, the church and just trying to use some of those houses, maybe even the wishing well with a little snow on it and maybe a wreath or two hanging off of it. So many possibilities. I'll have some more videos of that. I'm starting to get back into the groove, so hopefully the video production will go a little bit faster. So now I'm just pulling a color out into the front and I created this little mask so you see it's just that I'm very lazy I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I don't need the whole thing so I just did the base or the base of that um wishing well and the rope because I wanted the rope to really stand out and I didn't want it to get covered with flowers so I'm using the same mums that I used from the foliage set too but I'm using the ones from the mini flower set so it's the exact same image, but it's smaller, 
which is great because this is such a small image inside. And I'm inking it up with olive green and English red. So I'm just going to come right in and I'm going to go right in the middle there. I'm going to stamp it a few times and I'm going to go over a little bit into the left and then I'm going to ink it back up with some orange and olive green and then I'm going to ink it up again with some brilliant yellow because I just thought those three colors scream fall. I thought they would look really cool little rainbow inside this little wishing well. And I just wanted those I wanted those flowers to come right out of that well. So I'm taking the mask off. Now I'm going to come in with some some water on my brush and I'm just going to soften just a little bit of those greens. Not a lot, just to make them a little more fuller. And then I'm going to just go in with for the buds here and again not coloring them in completely leaving some white space but just bringing that color right out and making it pop as you can see that red really now is vibrant and that orange which I'm gonna do next is very dull and as you can see as I add the water it starts to come alive which is perfect so now I thought I would put a little bit more color just in those really dark areas so watercolor is one of those things that it dries back a little bit lighter so if there are areas that you want to make sure are really really dark you have to wait for that to dry and then come back in with another layer of color. And that's just a detail thing that you can do it if you want to or you don't have to. Now I'm putting the the mask back on those pumpkins because I'm going to stamp some of those mums right behind them. So I'm going to take that bunch of flowers from the foliage set, the big one, I mean the flower set two, the big one, and I'm going to ink it up again with our olive green and our English red. And I'm just going to put a just a little mask on the side there because I didn't want it to get into my wishing well. And then I'm just going to stamp a few times. When you see me stamping at the top, I'm only pressing on the buds. I'm not pressing on the whole thing because I didn't want those greens to get into the middle of those buds. So I was just kind of tipping it up so that I just stamped the, the flowers of that. And then I'll come in and I'll soften some of those greens in there. As you can see, I'm using a little bit of a brush stroke just to really emphasize that those are stems and then I'm just going to quickly come in and soften up those buds and I'm not stabbing these I'm actually using the side of my brush You want to make sure you you use the side of your brush when you're when you're painting and you're not stabbing at them because you'll get such better results if you use the side of your brush. So now I'm just taking some manganese blue and I'm creating I'm just creating some some clouds in the background. I just use a little bit of clean water to Soften those hard edges up. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add a ton of sky, just just some sky here and there. Just to, for the idea of a sky. Um Bonnie had put in one of her videos that when you're 
when you're doing things, you don't want to go all the way to the edges. You want to kind of keep like an oval or a round shape in mind and keep that so that you're in the middle of your of your paper and that's going to create your focal image. So if you see this, like this painting here, it would fit perfectly inside an oval. So I'm just putting some, some blue here and there, not going overboard with it. And then I thought it just needed a little bit of grasses just below that those cobblestones just to give a little bit more in the foreground and then I'll just pull that color up and out so it looks like it's just sitting in into those creases and crevices And just pulling a little bit more of that color out, which just grounds everything a little bit more and gives it a little bit more shadow. And I think we're just about finished. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to darken just a few more areas with my pen because I wanted that, really wanted that rope to stand out. And it kind of got a little bit lost. Sometimes those little details just make all the difference in the world. I'll just add a little bit more color to that wishing well, just in those dark areas. And then I'm going to sign and date. And that's it. That's our project for today. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your support. And I hope you have a great day. If you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. And I'm linking a few more videos in case you're interested. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.